Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to video number 5 in the how to program in C Sharp course. Today we're going to be taking a look at how we did last week's challenge and also add on to that and make it more fun by using a random number generator. I'm also going to show you a new piece of conditional logic called switch statements, which I think you're going to find pretty cool. So, uh, as always, I've opened up Xamarin Studio here, and this is what I've written out. We're going to be using this code throughout this video. So if you want to, uh, you can just go ahead and copy it off the screen and write it yourself. Or you can go to forum.brackies.com, where I've created a thread uh, where I've pasted the code here. So you can simply copy that and your program should work. So uh, the link is in the description. And if I'm not too lazy, uh, maybe even as an annotation. Cool. So let me just quickly walk you through this code. But first, let's just try and run the program. So it asks me, what is 16 times 4? And I'm going to write 64 because I know that. And then it's going to say, well done, your answer is correct. If I write, let's say, 2 to this question, it's going to say, are you even trying? I know I was not. <laughs> so, yeah, let me just walk you through this uh, so you can get an understanding of how this works. So we start out by creating two integer variables uh, called num1 and num2, and we set them to do two different numbers. They could be the same. Uh, then we use console.writeLoun to ask the user what is num1 times num2 and then a question mark. Then we collect the answer using a console.readLine, which we then convert to an integer and store in an integer variable called answer. Then if the answer is actually equal to num1 times num2, we're going to write out that the answer was correct. And if not, we're going to write out that it was not. And then, of course, we await some user input so our program ju uh, doesn't just suddenly close. Cool. So that's the basis of our program. But right now, it's not really fun, is it? Because, I mean, every time you run it, you get the same answer. So let's try and randomize this using a cool class that is included with C the C Sharp language called random. So just like we have a class here called main class, which we've made, and inside of that we have a method that does all different kinds of stuff. I mean, this method does math problems. Just like we have this main class, the C Sharp language has a class called random. And inside of this class, it has all kinds of different methods that does different things with random numbers such as generate a random integer between a min value and a max value, which is just what we need. So what we need to do is we need to reference this class. We need to do what is called create an instance of the random class. And that all sounds pretty complicated, but it actually is not too harsh syntax-wise. So let's try and write out random. And you can see that it shows us a public class called random. Then we're going to give this a name. We're going to call this the uh, number generator. And we're going to set this to a new random. And you're going to have to open and close the parentheses here. And then a semicolon. So that's the syntax for creating an instance of a class. It's an instance of a class because we are treating this just like an object, basically. Just like if we would spawn something in a game, here we're just spawning, sort of say, a class that can do different things. And we're calling it a number generator. So let me just show you what you can do with this. If you don't quite understand what, what this line does, it's completely okay. Uh, but you can actually do some pretty fun things with it no matter if you understand it or not. So let's, instead of write 16 here, let's write number generator dot next. 
This is the function that returns a non-negative number uh, that is, of course, random, and that is an integer. So if we just open and close the parentheses here, we are going to uh, assign a random number to the num1. But let's say that we want this to be within reasonable boundaries. Because, I mean, we are not so good at multiplying uh, numbers with, let's say, 10 decimals. Uh, or, um, so, or 10 digits. So let's instead make sure that this random number can only be between 1 and 10. So I'm going to start out by writing 1. And that's because this function's min value is what is called inclusive. That means that the first number you write is going to be included. Then I'm going to write comma. And you can see that it asks for a max value. And for this I'm going to write 11. And the reason why is that the max value is what is called exclusive, which means that the value itself is not going to be included, only the value right before. So this is actually going to do 1 through 10. So I'm just going to copy this and uh, replace the 4 with this. And now we actually have a random number, uh, random number generator that will work and now our program should be a lot more exciting. So let's try and hit play here. And you can see that it asks, what is 4 times 8? And I'm going to do 8, 16, and then 32. And you can see it says, well done, your answer is correct. Cool. So that's how you make sort of a, a small game. You can, of course, make this, this into a loop so it will just continue on infinitely. And, um, and then you're pretty good to go. Cool. So what I wanted to show you now is I want to show you another piece of conditional logic called the switch statement. So we've already looked at the if statement that compares things, basically it checks if a condition is met and if it is, it does something. Then we also have the ability to say that we want to do something if, it, if it, it's not, uh, or we can check for a whole new thing. But what a switch statement does is it handles really well if there's a bunch of things that we want to check for in one variable. So let's say that we have a, number a random number generator that makes a number between 1 and 10. And depending on the number, we want to do different stuff. Well, we could write if 1, then do this, else if 2, then do that, else if 3, and then on and on and on. Or we could just use a switch statement, which basically is easier to read and is much less syntax-wise. And that's the standard. You could do if, else, if, else, if, but really you should be using an if statement. So we could use this to maybe, let's say, make different uh, uh, answers depending uh, on a random factor. So let's say that we... Uh, answer wrong, then we want to uh, write different messages at random. So it's not going to say, are you even trying every time we do something wrong. Let's randomize this a bit and give multiple different responses. So in order to do this, we are going to make a new integer inside of this else statement. Uh, so we're going to make an int and we're going to call this uh, response. Oops, response index and we're going to set this to number generator dot next and let's just do uh, let's do three responses so let's do run one through four which is going to be three and uh, what we can then do is we can go ahead and make our switch statement so this is how it's going to look it's going to say switch right here and then just like an if, we're going to open and close parentheses. And inside of those, we're going to put in the response index. So now we can do stuff depending on what the response index is equal to. You can do the same with, let's say, string values. If this was a string, you can do the same with the switch. But for now, we're going to be using an integer because it works well with the random number generator. So switch response index. And then we're going to 
open up and close some brackets, just like the uh, if statement. And this is where it becomes just a bit, uh, just a tad different. So we're going to write case, and then we're going to write the, uh, the value uh, of the response index uh, that we are going to then do something with. So let's say the response index is equal to 1. Then we're going to do a colon. And down here, we can then write what happens if response index is equal to 1. So if it is, we are just going to type in the are you even trying? And then we're going to do a break. It's very important that after every case, you insert the, insert the break keyword. This is simply going to break out of the switch statement uh, so we can continue with our code. In some cases, you're not going to do a break here, but in this case, you are. We might get into what the break uh, tag actually can do for us in another video. So let's do some more cases. I'm just going to write another one here. I'm going to call this case 2. And uh, for this one, let's do console.write line. The answer was incorrect. And then I'm going to break again. And instead of writing case 3 here, which we could do, I'm going to write what is called a default case. So that means that if none of the other cases are met, we're just going to result to the default. This is kind of like the else in an if statement. So let's write default, and then just a colon. And we're going to write console.write line. And we can uh, type, you can do better than that. And then we are again going to break out of the switch. So that is basically all the code we need in order to give random responses back to the user. And this is going to make all the different programs that you're going to write a bit more exciting. Of course, this is not an effect that should be overused. But when our program is as simple as this, um, it's, it's great to do. And of course, switch statements can be used for much more than ju just this. So now we're actually ready to go ahead and hit play. So when we hit play here, I'm going to purposely type a wrong answer. I'm going to type 2. And it says, you can do better than that. Let's try with some more. Let's type 2 again here. Are you even trying? Let's see if we can get the last one. Uh, you can do better than that. Maybe the answer was incorrect. So that was basically it for today's video. I'm just going to quickly go ahead and give you a challenge for the next one. So if you feel like switch statements are kind of difficult still, all I want you to do is create a switch statement pretty much like this one, uh, but in here that will give different responses when the answer was correct. If you feel like you've completely mastered the switch statement already, what I want you to do is compare the answer that the user inputted with the correct answer to then determine how close the user was at answering the question correctly and then give a response based on that. Again, it's up to you what challenge you want to complete. I hope you can figure it out and uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.